Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you a miscellaneous reads video. I got two books to talk about, and they're both books that I finished a while back, but I didn't get to talk about them because um, they didn't fit the mystery theme that I have going on in my, on my channel in March for March Mystery Madness, but I still wanted to talk about them. So let's just get right into it. The first book that I want to mention is Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Caroline Frazier. This, uh, I read this for the Little House Readathon, which took place between February 7th and February 10th, and it was hosted by Elizabeth from Lizzie Faye Loves Books and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. And of course, this is a chunky book. It's got over 500 pages of reading, and then it's got like 100 pages of notes at the back. So I did finish it during the four-day readathon period, but I read it over the course of the month of February. Despite the subtitle, I would call this a dual biography of both Laura Ingalls Wilder and her daughter Rose Wilder Lane. And of course, it starts out with covering the events that are also covered in Laura's Little House books, her childhood, the family's various moves, and Caroline Frazier is really putting the events of the Little House books in their proper historical context. We learn about like the grasshopper, um, uh, you know, what's the word, storm, where they ate up all the plants. We learn about the politics of the area, particularly the interactions with the native populations and the white settlers that were moving in from the east. We learn about like the economics of farming. We learn about the government assistant programs. We learn about a lot of different things that aren't covered in the Little House books. And then it moves into a period of Laura's life that's not covered by the books. We see her working um, on the books. We see, you know, the, how fame affects her life. We also then get into Rose Wilder Lane's life, and we see a lot about her, and we see her various moves. She actually was very interested in the country of Albania, which I've never heard before, and she actually lived there for quite a long time and she was also you know constantly moving around from new york to missouri to california and just going all over the place and frazier is also talking about the relationship between uh, mother and daughter and how that was some kind sometimes kind of you know contentious based on um, money problems that they had and just personality um you know differences and things like that and so I was a little concerned going into this book because I thought it might negatively impact my view of Laura Ingalls Wilder. I'm a person that grew up with the Little House books and I absolutely love them, um, although I haven't read them in, in probably a good 20 years now. But um, but yeah, I was a little concerned but I because there had been some reports that this book was very negative about Laura Ingalls Wilder. And, and Rose Wilder Lane, and I mean, I wouldn't say it's negative, it's just being very realistic about the things that the Wilder, the English family and the Wild fam Wilder family did that may not be completely kosher. Um, she talks particularly about how when the Ingalls were living in Independence, Kansas, they actually were living on land that was supposed to belong to the Native American population according to government treaty, so they were being squatters. She also takes a more realistic view of Charles Ingalls, who is Pa in the books, because Laura, of course, adores her father, and so Caroline is sort of taking a more nuanced view. And also, there was there's been some debate about like how much influence Rose Wilder Lane had on the influence of the Little House books, like writing them and things like that. Some people now believe that she actually wrote the whole thing and just just put Laura's name on it, but. Frazier says, no, that's not true, that, the, um, that you know, Laura had a, a big, was mostly responsible, and then Rose did, like, some editing, and she did rewrite some things, and if you compare drafts and things like that, but that makes sense, because at, before Laura wrote these books, Rose was the writer of the family, so it kind of makes sense that she helped a little bit, and Frazier also talks about how journalism, like Laura actually started out writing newspaper articles for the local paper. She did farm articles. And at this time, like in the early 1900s, journalism wasn't totally concerned with the truth per se. Like 
it was very common for newspapers to pick up a story and like republish it without any, you know, accreditation of the original source. And so to Laura and to Rose, the idea of like truth and like, you know, accuracy and also like, like getting credit for what belongs to you wasn't like super important. So it makes sense in the long run how these two women sort of shared the responsibility of writing these books with the you know, Laura, again, taking the main uh, role in it. And I was going to say, I was not, um, I was not shocked by anything in here because uh, the American, the American Library Association actually renamed their biggest award, their biggest children's author award. Uh, it used to be called the Laura Ingalls Water Award and they removed her name from it a few years ago and when they did that they specifically cited the same controversies that Caroline Fraser cites so I I already knew a lot about the controversies so again nothing surprising I really enjoyed this I learned a lot I will say it's not a page turner in the and, you know, it's not something that you, like, read a ton of in one sitting, but it is a very interesting book. I will say, if you are not a big, you know, if you're not a lover of War and Eagles Wilder, you're probably going to find this overly detailed because Caroline Fraser does, you know, tell you a lot of stuff. And it's all good information, but it is a lot. But, yeah, overall, really enjoyed this book. The next book that I want to mention is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. I had intended to read this in February for Black History Month and I didn't get to it and I did not want to put it back on my shelf so I decided to go ahead and pick up the audiobook from my library and I figured it would be a good contrast with all the mystery readings because I didn't really want to read a mystery and listen to a mystery on audio at the same time because I felt like I might get confused about the two plots. The narrator of the audiobook was J.D. Jackson, and he was great. And at the time I'm filming this, I'm listening to Bluebird, Bluebird by Attica Locke on audiobook too, and J.D. Jackson is the narrator as well. And yeah, I'm really, really enjoying his voice and his style if you're interested in checking out either one of those audiobooks. So this is a historical fiction book following two black boys, Elwood and Turner, and they meet at the Nickel Academy for Boys, which is a reformed school in California, and it's actually a very, very terrible school where the teachers are abusive and they sexually abuse the boys, and in some cases they actually kill the boys for perceived um, misdeeds, and so it's a very horrible, horrible place. And in this book is following um, the two boys and how they deal with the um, hardships and you know, terrible things that are going on at this school. Elwood, in particular, is our main character, and he is very um, interested in the uh, beliefs of Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I should say, and, you know, particularly the nonviolent resistance movement. Um, we see his life before he goes to uh, Nickel, and he is very involved in the local um civil rights movement. He goes and marches and he's very influenced by one of his teachers and actually at the time he was sent to Nickel, he uh, was hitchhiking to college because he was going to take some college classes while he was still in high school and he ends up getting into a car that has been stolen. Oh, he doesn't he doesn't know that and so he is arrested as an accessory to this crime of you know car theft and sent to nickel so at, when he gets to nickel he meets turner and turner is very much his opposite turner has grown up in a less um, genteel society and so he is not interested in non-violent uh, resistance. He is more interested in, you know, getting crap done in a, the most efficient way, and he is very interested in, you know, retaliating retali 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 against the teachers. But we see how they, the two come to influence each other, and we see how their friendship shapes both of them while they're at Nickel, and then also after they get out of Nickel, because the book does flash forward several years, and we follow Elwood as he is going into his the rest of his life. And so it is a really, really wonderful book. I definitely recommend it. I will say it's not a book that I can't say I enjoyed it because it is 
very hard to read about the hardships that the boys go through. Although I will say there's no gratuitous uh, violence or trauma shown in this book. I mean, it, it does tell you what goes on. It does describe some of it, but it does, I mean, before it gets to the most horrific parts, it either fades to black or it talks about it in a circumspect way. So while I would say there are, um, you know, trigger warnings for like child abuse, you know, sexual abuse, things like that. It is not like as graphic as I thought it might be. So yeah, I really thought this was an amazing book. It won the Pulitzer in 2020, so I'm sure many of you have read it and know how amazing it is. But yeah, I was just really, really impressed with this book. All right, so I'm just going to talk about the two books today, and then I will talk about the two other ones in my next miscellaneous reads. I hope everybody else is doing great, and you're reading some great mysteries, although right now, when you see this, it's going to be April, so you're probably not going to be reading mysteries anymore, in which case, I hope you're reading some great books, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!